The goal is for you to mature. I don't care if you're 66 years old. Mature. You still need to mature. You still are growing and getting better. Watch this. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 3 through 6. I'm going to go with message version again. The world is unprincipled. It's a dog eat dog out there. The world doesn't fight fair, but we don't fight. We don't live or fight our battles that way. Never have and never will. What he's saying here is we don't fight and if we don't do this with gloves, I was supposed to have my gloves. And this is what we want to do. We want to swing on the devil. What are you swinging at? This, this is spiritual warfare. You do this on your knees. Remember the last verse? Pray hard and long. That's how you boxing. That's how you jab and duck and jab and duck and uppercut. That's how you K on them on your knees in prayer. Watch this. He says, he says, the tools of our trade aren't for marketing or manipulation, but they are for demolishing the entirely massive corrupt culture. Guys, I'm giving you tools to destroy the culture. Church, I'm giving you tools that can tear. Don't, the culture shouldn't dictate the church. We should dictate what they're doing. Based on how we move, the culture should move with it. But no, we see something they're doing, and then we bring it in here so we can look cool. We're a flight of flags outside the church. We'll do all this stuff to try to say, hey, we're, we're, we're down. He says, we're supposed to tear down the things, the strongholds in culture, not bring them in. Watch, he says, he says, we, are, we use our powerful God tools for smashing warped philosophies, tearing down barriers, barriers erected against the truth of God, fitting every loose thought and emotion and impulse into the structure of, of life shaped by Christ. Anything and everything in your life that ain't been to Christ, depend on Christ, trusting in Christ, principled by Christ, we tear it down. Everything that God is not pleased in, can't get any glory out of, can't sit with, we rip it out. He said we use these well-made tools, these weapons, to destroy culture and what the enemy is trying to do. It's a battle, culture versus Christ. We're the, we're the, we're the people on the chessboard. We're the, we're, the, we're the people that's doing the work. Watch this. He says... Feeding every loose thought and emotion and impulse into the structure of life shaped by Christ. Our tools are ready hand at hand for clearing the ground of every obstruction and building lives of obedience. Here we go again. Into maturity. Obeying, obe- obeying into maturity. Watch this. Our entire lives, y'all, is what we want, how we want, and when we want it. Yeah, living your best life. Your whole life is what you want, when you want, and how we want it. What we want to eat, what we want to date, what we want to do, what our career we want. We have never sought God on anything. We, we, a lot of us are going to die. And God said, I have so much for you, but you never sought me. You never presented yourself as an offering. You never really understood what I had designed you for. You knew it was a purpose in your life. Something kept saying, I got a purpose that God got me here. It's something that God wants for me, but you never presented your life up to me so I can, so I can will you and prune you into it. You just knew I, I just walk around. A lot of men, I'm, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I got stuff that's bubbling your good. You know, God, I'm, it's something that I'm missing in my life. It's something that's not right. It's something that I'm supposed to be doing. Like, I can't. So we try to go start a business. Or we try to just go move. Or we try, and then that doesn't fulfill it. I'm like, okay, I got to do something. And God's saying, he's, he's saying, I need you to present your life to me. Our design, we design our whole life to keep us comfortable. Everything in our life is to keep us comfortable and keep us happy. Watch this. It's a competition now. Culture versus Christ, living my best life. It's a competition now who can make the best facade on social media. Who can look like they the happiest. But you didn't post when he cheated on you. But you just post like everything's so happy. And we're just so happy. It's this big facade of how can I, can I make myself look and appear to my friends because of my insecurities because I was bullied in high school. So I can, can I make myself, all my old friends that I know that's looking at me, look like I'm just doing so well. Culture versus Christ, living my best life. Live your truth. We live in our truth. We got to live out our truth. Who we are, who we want to be, and can't nobody stop us because this is who I am. You need to accept me and accept my bull or move on. The Bible makes it clear, y'all, what it looks like when we get what we want. And this is why I want to hit we live in our best life. The Bible makes it inextricably clear what our lives will look like when we, all we're doing is getting what we want and living how we want. Give me Galatians. Chapter 6, I mean, chapter 5, verse 16. Watch this. But I say, walk habitually 
in the Holy Spirit. Now, we, remember that habitually word from a couple weeks ago? Walk habitually in the Holy Spirit. Seek him and be responsive to his guidance. And then you will certainly not carry out the desire of your sinful nature, which responds impulsively without regard for God and his precepts. Your, he says your, your flesh, your nature, your natural flesh and nature just responds without, he says it responds without any regard for God. That's what your flesh is. It can care less about God. It hates it. Watch this. He says, verse 17, for the sinful nature has its de- desire, which is opposite the spirit. So this culture versus Christ, your flesh want to touch something, do something, but the spirit's like, don't do it. No, please. Don't. Ah, oh, Lord, don't do it. And we be having that thing in our mind that's trying to force us not to do it. Don't do it. He says, he says, sinful nature has its desire, which is opposes the spirit, and the desire of the spirit opposes the sinful nature. The, the, for these two, the sinful nature and the spirit are direct opposite to each other, continually in conflict. Culture versus Christ. Living your best life versus living sacrifice. They're constantly battling. Watch this. He says, so that as a believers, you do not always do whatever good things you want to do. That's why it's so hard for us sometimes. Like, why did I do that? Dang it. It's a war. And he'd be like, yep, I got this battle. See, we know how this ends. We know how the war ends. Jesus took care of that. But it's a battle every day in your life. It's a battle multiple times in your life. Watch this verse 18. But if you are guided by and led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Then the practice of the sinful nature are clearly evident. Here we go. When we live in our best law, it's evident. It says sinful nature is clearly evident. So don't tell me. You don't know me. How do you know? I know you. You judge a tree by its clearly evident. Here they go. They are. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, total irresponsibility and lack of self-control, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, disputes, dissensions, and dissensions is disagreement that leads to discord. Like, it, it is disagreements that you know are going to just lead to beefing and arguments. He says factions. He says factions is just a state of conflict within the organization. So just you always got to be at work popping off and doing the most. Factions. He says within the organization, you're always being petty and starting little fights and doing little stuff. You enjoy seeing the people. You enjoy it. He says, watch this. That promotes heresies. He says envy, drunkenness, right, uh, ride, uh, 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 riotous, right, right, riotous. Watch this. And that's just disturbance of the peace or public disorder. You always the one popping off and doing the most. You have no self-control. Be, uh, uh, other, and other things like these, I'll warn you beforehand, just as I did previously, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. I've heard this talk for years that you say you won't go to heaven. It says it right there in Galatians. Paul was not, that was not what he was telling Galatians. He said you will have no inheritance. You will not be able to participate in the kingdom of God. You will have no inheritance. And let's be honest, some of y'all going to go to heaven and be broke. Because I never gave you, I never presented yourself a living sacrifice. You believed in Jesus, you knew that was the truth, but you lived your entire life for yourself. You lived your entire life according to what you wanted. And you're going to die and spend eternity. You're going to die and spend eternity broke. I love how Dr. Tony Evans said, you're going to be street sweepers. They're going to be the happiest trash people ever. Not trash people, but trash boys, dumpster boys. They're going to be on the death and by truck of heaven. He's happy because you never gave God anything. You believed, you knew he was true, but you allowed your flesh to run your life. And he said, you have no inheritance here. You, I, I can't come into your life and bring the kingdom down from heaven into your life. I can't give you, any, I can't give you anything because you won't offer up yourself for living sacrifice. You rather let culture and your flesh do it. You rather let this list of things control you rather than me. He says, watch this, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit, the result of his presence within us, is love. Unselfish concern for others. Unselfish concern for others. Well, I'm telling your wife you love her, but you're selfish. It's unselfish concern. We talked about this earlier, the definition of love is selfishly, uh, 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 selfishly righteously, and uh, righteously, and uh, pursuing the well-being of another. So if you're not selflessly, righteously pursuing the well-being of another, that's not love. Joy, inner peace, patience, not the ability to wait, but, the, but how we act while waiting. I could preach that, but I got to go. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their sinful nature together with his passions and appetites. We crucified it. We killing that thing. 
We killing that thing. We're dying to ourselves daily. Watch what he said in verse 25. If we claim to live by the Holy Spirit, live meaning believe, if we can't claim to believe the Holy Spirit, we must also walk lifestyle by the Spirit with personal integrity, good character, and moral courage, or conduct empowered by the Holy Spirit. This is what it looks like when you're living for God. That's what it looks like when you're living for the enemy. 